part of the talk that we promoted out was to talk about how um, seasonal campaigns are quite key and how you can get um, cut through through those big noise of um, Christmas ads that are currently running and polluting your mobile phones across social media, whatever you <laughs> yeah. see. Now that Black Friday and Cyber Monday is over, which is the biggest peak that we see, now everything moves towards Christmas as consumers start moving into and businesses start planning for the new year from a service point of view, but consumers start thinking about final Christmas purchases and New Year purchases around seasonal holidays. So the whole focus of today's talk is to help you prepare for seasonal campaigns and help you get through that Christmas digital ad noise. And for that, and I wish I had the presentation because there would have been some really cool graphics that I worked on, uh, which has seemingly gone to waste. Um, um, we come up with five key tips. But before you start, you should realize that Christmas campaign planning isn't easy and that you should actually really have a defined plan before actually December begins. I would always aim to say that you start your Christmas planning as early as September, if not August. Some of the larger clients we work with were always a season ahead. So when it, <coughs> we're actually in the process of talking about Easter and it's December. And the reason for that is because once Christmas and New Year ends, that's it is to run up to, you know, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, um, Easter, so that next season kind of plays part. And then when we're in that next season, we're always ahead, and we're talking about summer and spring sales and, you know, end of winter sales, etc., and then uh, early summer offers. So always try to be a bit ahead and plan ahead where you are. It does get confusing sometimes because it's Christmas and you're talking about Easter, so you get confused what time of year it is. So <coughs> do prevent that. But it is a snow blizzard of ads and competitors out there right now. Everyone is getting ads out right now. We always see a huge lift in search queries across Google, but always see a, a huge lift in increases in terms of cost per click across key channels across, and cost per views across like YouTube and Facebook, etc. And that's because it becomes a more of a competitive environment and more people are bidding against the same audiences on a more much more broader level. And plus you see the bigger players also, also come out like Coca-Cola and John Lewis that try to take up a lot of broader reach. But we have the four and five steps and I'll share this out with everyone to focus on. The first one is define your objectives. Without having specific objectives, you're going to have your yearly objectives in terms of what you want to achieve as a business to grow, but have seasonal objectives because you should be breaking out your budgets down into different seasons. Like I said, have your Christmas plan done before December, um, but it's always good to have some kind of numerical objective against that. So if you're a larger business, it could be we want to increase sales over this period by a million pounds. Or for small businesses, you might be like, oh, we want a 5% year and year increase of sales or business leads in this period compared to the year before. Always have something defined. Again, it comes back to those smart objectives. Have them defined and specific and measurable because once you start your campaign and planning, it comes to reviewing it at the end of the season and throughout the season, you want to see how well are you delivering against your original objectives and has it been worthwhile doing all this setup and all this planning beforehand. So having a strategic objectives in place helps you develop a clear strategy. <coughs> Now you know you want, what you want to do and what you want to achieve. So for some businesses, depending whether you're an individual, you might be want to get new clients on board. For others, it's like you really want to push this product over this season. Now you know what your objective is. You need to have a clear message. Now, it can be really hard communicating across Christmas because everybody's going to be doing the exact same thing. You've got your larger business going for the, what we call the emotional response. So hands up if you've seen the John Lewis ad. I'll be surprised if you haven't. Um, okay, Stuart has them. I'm surprised by that. Uh, I'm you disengaged. Well, I, I could understand that going from the same background. So, you, everyone knows about the um, John Lewis ad. Everyone knows about the Coca-Cola ad. Sometimes they say it's not Christmas until you've seen the Coca-Cola ad. Somebody That's when it starts. Yeah. And I've seen the Coca-Cola ad on television. It's officially Christmas. Yeah. I deleted it. But that, yeah. <laughs> but you see how the bigger companies go for more of an emotional response because they already have that brand recognition. They're just reinforcing their brand at that time of year to make sure they're front of mind. But we don't have the Coca Colas and John Lewis in this room. We have small independent contractors in this room. So what they tend to do is go for the hard sell, like 50% off or um, free delivery or you know next day delivery um, and you know 20 pound off your neck as a new customer voucher and, and specific cus um, discounts etc which can be good and focused if that's what you want to do 
but you need to determine which, which focus you're gonna go for, whether you're gonna go for an emotional response or a hard, hard, hard sell, because based on that, the type of creative and uh, creative formats you use will play a key part. So to stand out, normally what people do when they've had their clear message, whether it's emotional or, or a hard sell, they'll use a, a, either imagery, GIFs, or, or video content. Um, now it's Christmas, so it's, as I called it, the season to be jolly. So if you are gonna be using those creative, try and get, try to stand out as much as you can with your message. Try and focus on the core, key call to action that you want to do. Consumers are gonna be seeing thousands of messages a day. So what's gonna make you stand out? What creative format's gonna make you stand out? Don't go for the obvious 50% off. Change your creative of, um, continuously so you stay front of mind because if you keep pushing the same creative out for about a month, people just can get bored of it because like I've already seen that, they're gonna look at the next thing. But video is king right now. So if you really wanna get cut through with your message, I would translate that into video content. Even if it's just like a, a gift turned into a video format, which has some kind of um, process that follows through, um, it's really impactful with a short message and a short video can really get a lot of cut through. So remember, you want to do something with your message that makes them stand out and video is a format that helps that. So right, you've got your objectives. So you define what your objectives are. Um, you've got the type of message you're gonna go, whether it's emotional or hard, and you collect, selected a kind of format you're gonna run. Now it's about selecting the right channel. Now, a lot of customers come up to us saying, well, what new channel should we go out with over Christmas to expand um, our activity? And I was like, there is no new channel. You already know which channels are working for you because your consumers and customers are already engage, engaging. Um, what I would recommend is just being more narrowed and specific and narrow that audience out. Don't be as broad. The bigger companies will be broad and just try and get repetitive um, ads out there. Whereas if you're a small independent business, um, a great example is we're working with a client called Space Fitness and Wellbeing. Now they're based in Berlin and Wharfdale, which is a small catchment area. Now we're not running ads in Leeds, we're just running ads in the LS29 postcode because that's where they're based and they're doing specific seasonal offers because come January, the key period is, everyone thinks, that's it, New Year's resolution, I'm gonna lose weight. I've been saying it for 10 years and I, I haven't kept up to it. The only one thing, yeah, I mean, you yeah, can't, can't tell, can you? Can't tell, it doesn't help that I do samosas at my networking event as well. So, um, so everyone has a New Year's resolution, everyone gets a, everyone gets a different mindset and they wanna try something new um, and it's all about capturing that. But what we're doing is, and she's like, I wanna target you know, as broad as we can and we said, no, you know your channels that are working. Right now what's working for you is social media across Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. What we're gonna do is narrow that down and narrow down to who your existing audiences are. And she already has a database of her existing customers. She already knows the age range, she already knows where they live, their job titles, their demographics. She knows that 80% of them are female and only 20% of them are male. And she knows that on average, their earnings are 35,000 plus because it's not a cheap uh, space and fitness wellbeing center. But she is promoting something new called Passes that gives them 10 classes. Um, over that period, so it's pushing that out. So you already know what channels work, so what we said to that uh, specific client was just increase the type of messaging in different formats you're running and narrow it down to your audience and maybe broad out your audience targeting in that area a little bit more, um, but just come up with some specific clear message um, um, to define that. And the way we're gonna measure that is based on how many people sign up to the new year pass over the course of December and January to see the impact. So again, defined objectives, a specific message to focus on, which is the seasonal pass to download, again, focus on a narrow audience. So there's a lot of channels to pick from, Google, and our previous talk, we've talked about a lot of things about itself. Google campaigns, how to make use of social media campaigns. We'll be running those kind of um, talks throughout the next new year. But the key channel to use in abundance uh, and I don't tend to favor a channel, is social media. Social media right now is gonna be high in engagement as people are sharing Christmas trees that they've just decorated. Um, they're gonna be looking at what everyone's doing, booking holidays, etc. Engagement across social media right now is gonna be high over the seasonal period, especially over key times when people break up for Christmas. 
as well. So a key time that people don't realize over Christmas is after Christmas day when people got a lot of money they've given, they got a lot of like um, gift cards across Amazon and stuff like that. That's a key period from um, actually Boxing Day on towards New Year's that you actually really want to push out ads because people are using the free money and the gifts that they've got and disposable income or going back and getting refunds from the presents that they didn't like from their family, if you like me. <laughs> that. So social media is going to be key, but social media opens up to so many different channels available. But the key elements are if you want to target broad and give yourselves a lot more options, Facebook's really good. Facebook's really good because you also have Instagram, so you've got two different types of um, social platforms there that are quite effective. Plus, like we said, you can narrow it down to postcode level. So if you just want to target people in Leeds, you can target people in Leeds. If you want to target people in LS27 or LS1 or City Centre, you can do that. It's quite, quite effective. So a good emphasis should be on social media. Um, and when you're doing that, consider budgets. And a lot of people in this room aren't going to have £5 million to create a John Lewis video campaign and run it out. We understand that, so budget is key. But there's a lot of things you can do. And why we say social media is, and other channels like Google is you can do stuff like techniques like day parting. So if you know your consumer is spending a lot of time on social media between 6 o'clock and 11 o'clock at night on their mobile phone, then you've already got a lot of information there. So what you should be targeting is running ads between 6 and 10 o'clock in the evening only, pushing your products within that catchment area, pushing out that video message that is reinforcing what you're doing, but you're only running your budget at between six and 10 o'clock in the evening when they're engaged in the afternoon and running it only to mobile formats. So there's a lot of things you can do as a small business and think, you know what, I don't have thousands of pounds to spend on social media. You do not need thousands of pounds to spend on social media. You can spend 200 pound over a week or two weeks and just target a specific audience and run your ads at a time when you know that that audience is going to be engaging on that platform and most likely to consider or buy your product. <coughs> if it's a business, for example, it's LinkedIn, then you might want to run ads during the day because they might not be on LinkedIn in the afternoon and switch their focus towards other social media platforms. So stuff like time of day targeting is really, really, really effective. If you're out there trying to find new customers, then again, within that audience targeting, you can use a small amount of budget and use um, elements like lookalike targeting, which is taking existing data. Again, that's not going to give you thousands of customers to target. It's going to give you a small group of customers who look like your existing customers. And you might get two, three hundred pounds spend away over a couple of weeks in just a defined postcode area. Remember, when you narrow down your targeting, the amount of budget you can get away becomes lower. Your cost per click goes up, but you, are, you can't get that much away because you've only got a specific amount of reach you can hit. And that's how you get through all that ad noise because you're not competing with all the big, bigger competitors out there, the people with the bigger ad spend. Focus on your narrowed audience and focus your budget at that specific time when those consumers are engaging and get cut through in the area where you can actually take market share and actually drive and get conversions and, and put a spe specific call to action in place. And then finally, and we say this every time we do a presentation, optimize and measure. Don't just do all that process and not understand the learnings from the campaign. Within two, three days, if you're running, for example, a social media campaign, you'll know if it's working based on the amount of clicks and click-through rate you're driving the amount of traffic going to your website. If you've got analytics, you'll see the bounce rate from people coming from social media. If you put in particular UTM URLs in place that tracks different channels, you'll see what the bounce rate is. So actually, are people staying on my website for a long period of time from this campaign? Plus, you can look at the time on analytics to see you know, was it between 6 and 10 when my traffic increased or is it during the day? So use that data and analysis to tailor your ad and optimize. And as we say, always try different messages. Don't just go with one message and one format. Come up with different elements. There's a lot of tools out there, and, I, and I'll, I'll share some tools out and some links out um, at the end of this presentation that you can actually do free, create free social media images and create free video gifts. So if your budget's tight, there are a lot of free tools out there for you to create that. And all it requires is your time. And you can create six, seven different types of creative and run them out at different times and different days. You could have a different message over the weekend and you could have a different message throughout the week. You can break your message down by different audiences. So 
someone was giving me an example about a car manufacturer in terms of how would you promote out um, financing options for that. And I would say break it down by the age demographic, do 18 to 19, 20 to 21, and do different messages to different age groups and break it down as much as you want. That way your budget's much more narrowed and more focused. And then you'll know which audiences are delivering the best results because you'll know from the normal metrics you get from the channel like clicks, revenue, um, conversion numbers, what's working so always optimize and measure don't just set it up and run it keep an eye on it every couple of days and make subtle changes or remove ads and create new ads the more you optimize and review your performance the more likely you're gonna hit your, your defined objectives you set for that season so to summarize five key tips one define your objectives well in advance we always say try and do it if, if you're an independent, try and do it before November. If you can, or December at the latest, you should already have your Christmas and seasonal campaigns um, planned and objectives in place by now. Have a clear message supported by the right creative. We recommend a video. We'll send out some tools that you can use to create um, free um, creative formats from that. Pick the right channels. You know what's already working. You, you're already using them. Consumers are already converting from them. Just narrow your audience down a lot more. Plan your budget. You don't need thousands of pounds to run seasonal campaigns. You can drive cut through by just focusing on who your target audience is and just by covering that small space by audience targeting and measure and optimize as you go along because you're not going to understand what works. So when it comes to next season, you're not going to know what worked and what to stay away with. Plus, digital marketing is always evolving and ever growing. So always keep in mind that what you do the year before doesn't always work, but there are subtle learnings and data you can take from that that gives you a foundation for the next year. Do we have any questions? Um, what, um, you know when you say you had your fitness client, what budget did you recommend to them and then what, um, what results did you see that were expected for it? To protect, my, to, to, to protect my client, I'm going to sell the budget, but it was under a thousand pound. It was over 500 pound and it was under a thousand pound. And that's just for one month. So we're running a three month campaign and that was split across Google, Facebook, Instagram, and retargeting. So a lot of options in there. But again, we're only targeting the TLS, LS29 on wider postcodes and doing a bit of competitive tagging. So across Google, we're targeting people searching for yoga classes, but just within a mile radius uh, to a two mile radius of where they are. So why do they need to brand out to all of Leeds when someone from South Leeds like me, I'm not going to drive all the way to Burley and Wharfdale to go to a yoga class. There'll be one close to me within a mile's radius. So it's just pushing out there. But they have a higher... Uh, demographic in terms of client because their products aren't cheap and it's a, a certain affluent of customers so we have been cherry picking a couple of wider postcodes in North Leeds that people might be willing to drive through because they hit that particular audience so again that's just one channel then we're doing the same thing across Facebook and Instagram but running video ads and pushing the pass out and driving people to the website all the all Google Facebook and Instagram driving people to the website what we're going to do to those people that drive off and think not right just yet a retargeting pool, so putting a retargeting pixel on the site and then reinforcing that. All done within one budget, they're creating all the creative, we're just setting up the campaign and running it, and our focus is to drive conversions and get their classes full in time for January and the new year. So again, small budget, but very, very effective because we're targeting it and we've got a specific seasonal message and a particular seasonal product to push out, but we're not competing with every uh, fitness and wellbeing centre in Leeds, we're just competing with the ones within that area that people will turn up to.